If you have a regular job, working for a regular company, you've got a regular boss, it's expected that you're going to get a raise every so often. The amount of time goes by or you reach some performance goals and your boss calls you into the office and says, Johnson, you've been doing a good job. Here's a raise. If you're an independent barber or hairstylist though, we don't get these things. We don't get the benefits. We don't get the guaranteed raises. We don't get any of that. To be honest, raising your haircut prices isn't always the easiest way to get a raise. Sometimes it's easier to try to negotiate or renegotiate your rent or your commission rate at your salon. Sometimes it's easier to just pump up your retail sales. Sometimes it's easier to just add an hour to the day and take more clients. But all these things are limited. I mean, you're not going to get a free chair somewhere, at least not long term. Maybe you'll get a deal and get a free chair for a short time. There's a limit there. Eventually, you've got to pay for where you're working. And also, you can't cut hair 25 hours a day. At some point, you can only cut so much hair in a day. And so all of those things are very limited. You can get maybe a little, little budge to keep more of your money. But at some point, if you want to raise, you have to raise your prices. To anybody who knows even a little bit about business, this is common sense. But for some reason in the hair industry, it's often looked at as a sin to raise your prices, like it's rude or it means you have an ego. Just yesterday, a barber who I don't know was giving me crap on Instagram, telling me that I take advantage of my clients by charging what I charge. And, and he was touting his nobility for being a cheap haircut, that he was hooking it up and keeping it real for the clients and he would never charge more. I understand where people are coming from when they have this feeling, this sentiment that a price raise is like a middle finger to your clients, your, your loyal clients who have been with you for years. I totally get that. I get how it feels that way. Can you imagine if you were the regular employee working for the regular company and you went into your regular boss and he sat you down and said, Johnson, you've been working really hard. You deserve a raise. And then you look back at your boss and you go, hey, I appreciate that, but no thanks, boss. I, I want to keep my old rate because I want to keep it real for the customer. I don't want them to have to pay for my raise. Now granted, in a regular job, regular boss, regular employee scenario, there's so many degrees of separation between what the customer pays for the product or service and what you are paid. And so it's hard to imagine that your raise is coming out of the pocket of the customer, but it absolutely is. That's totally how it works. Anything you're getting paid is coming from the customer. But you would never imagine in that scenario being sat down and offered a raise and turning it down because you want to keep it real for the customer. Or likewise, let's say the boss sits you down and he says, Johnson, you've been doing great, you deserve a raise, but we're not going to give it to you because at this company, we keep it real for the customer and we don't want them to have to pay for your raise. You would be pissed. There would probably be lawsuits. There would be unions involved. It would be a whole big thing. As an independent barber or hairstylist, in so many ways, you are your own boss. And when you deny yourself a price raise, when it's the appropriate time to have a price raise, you are being that boss to yourself and sitting you down and saying, I know you deserve a raise, but I'm not going to give it to you because it's a customer. You are being that boss. So on a micro scale, one barber to one client conversation, it's terrifying to raise your prices to tell somebody, hey, your next haircut after this one is gonna be $5 more expensive than it has been. Terrifying. You don't wanna be seen as greedy. You don't wanna be seen as having an ego and thinking you're worth more. You don't want, there's, there's so many horrible scenarios that go through your head. Like, I can't raise my prices $5 on this guy and sit down and have a conversation with him about it. Like, I'd be embarrassed. But if you look at the macro scale here, you look at your business on a macro level, you look at the whole thing and you crunch all your numbers, I did a quick internet search today and I found that the average haircut price in America is $28. Now this is factoring in beachfront salons down to the neighborhood barbershop in Oklahoma and everything in between. But the national average is $28 according to the internet. So I'll work with that figure. So let's say you're working eight hours a day, five days a week, doing a haircut every half hour minus one haircut for a lunch break. So, you know, one half hour lunch break. So you're doing 15 cuts a day at $28 a piece. That means that if everybody shows up, if you're booked solid, you're not getting any cancellations, you're not getting any no-shows, you're going to be making $420 a day or $2,100 a week. Now, if you take two weeks vacation every year, which is pretty common, you're going to actually be making $105,000 a year, which is, that's pretty good, right? But let's say you're, on, you're in a commission salon and your, your commission split is 50-50. Now you're only keeping just over $52,000 a year. That's a lot less exciting. You could probably still live on that, but it's not 105,000. 
Let's say you're also losing, I don't know, close to 15 grand in taxes. You spend $1,000 this year on tools. You spend another $1,000 on continued education. Let's say you're, you're covering your health insurance that's like $800 a month, which is $9,600 over the year. After all of that, of your $105,000, what you're actually keeping and taking home is just over $25,000. That's not a lot. That's basically your mortgage. But let's say you're relying on your tips to cover your car and your gas and your food and your clothing. So let's say the average client gives you $5 for a tip. If you're doing that, again, book solid all the time, you're looking at $75 a day in tips or $375 a week, which over the year works out to about 18 grand. Okay, that's a car, that's clothes, that's food, all right. If you're 25 years old and you're single, that's good money, that's pretty good. Like I would be very happy as a single 25 year old making that money. But imagine, imagine you're 39 years old or imagine you're 45 years old and you're making that money. Now you've got two kids, three kids, gas is more expensive because it's the future. Those kids are on your health insurance and so those rates are through the roof now. When you picture yourself 15, 20 years in the future, and you're still making what you're making today, working your ass off 40 hours a week, does that sound comfortable? Does that sound happy? Does that sound fair? Do you wanna be the 40 year old barber who's been cutting hair for 20 years? You're a master at this point. And because you are keeping it real for your customers and never wanting to raise their prices, you're still bringing home $25,000 a year. You're still at 40 years old with 20 years experience cutting hair, relying on tips to get your shoes, counting on those tips because you're not gonna eat without them. Is that the future you want? When you sit and think about extend what's gonna happen in 15, 20 years, you like to imagine, well, I hope I'd be making more money than that. And so something in that scenario, if you paint the picture of the 40, 45 year old master barber, been at it for years, been book solid for years, and he's bringing home $25,000 a year, something doesn't seem right. We might feel like a $5 price raise is a middle finger to our customers, but in 20 years, if you miss out on hundreds of thousands of dollars that you will desperately need as your kids are growing, as everything else is getting more expensive, I feel like that is a bigger middle finger. And so instead of giving this little middle finger to some clients who might not like a price raise, we're giving a big middle finger to ourselves and denying our future growth. And so you think of that scenario, well, by the time I'm 40, I guess I will raise my prices. Well, what are you waiting for? You know, like you, you can keep pushing it off year after year and 10 years down the road, be making exactly what you were making 10 years ago. Nobody wants that in their career. If the regular guy with the regular job got that, making the same money for 10 years, he would leave that job. But as barbers and hairstylists, we're so afraid of raising our prices that we work the same year over and over and over and never get the raise. And we are our boss telling ourselves, no, we, I'm not gonna give you a raise. And we are also the employee telling our boss right back, well, it's okay because I don't want the raise anyways. So when do you raise your prices? This is literally supply and demand. It's economics 101. Like you learn about this in the first week of an economics class. If you Google economics, this is one of the first principles that comes up. It is so common sense, but for some reason in the hair industry, it's not. <laughs> supply and demand says when you have a limited amount of supply and you're selling out of that thing too fast, the price has to go up. So with haircuts, again, you can't cut hair 24, 25 hours a day. You have a limited amount of haircuts you can do. If you are selling out of your haircuts too quickly, they are too cheap. So when do you raise your prices? If you're sitting around, you're about 75% booked, most of your day you're working, but you got some gaps where you're sitting and doing nothing, hoping for a walk-in or whatever, it's not time to raise your prices. Even if you think you're good and I took a class and so I'm worth more now, well no, if you've got gaps in your schedule, you're worth what you're charging. But when your schedule is so tight that somebody calls you and says, like, hey, I wanna get a haircut, and all you can tell them is, bro, I'll get you in four weeks, now you're too booked. Hey, I'll get you, I, I can't get you this weekend or next weekend, but the weekend after that, I, I got an opening. That's too booked. If every time you look at your phone, you've got a text from a client saying, man, can you squeeze me in? Your, your, your books are tight again. If you're getting that regularly, you are too booked and it is time to raise your prices. Your, your supply is out. You are out of haircuts that you can give and your demand is too high, which is why you're out of haircuts to give. And so you need to lower your demand by raising your prices. Now again, on a micro scale, one barber to one client or one hairstylist to one client, it's scary to do and it feels like a little middle finger to them. But at that point, it's also a middle finger to them to say, hey, yeah, I'll get you in five weeks. I, I feel like it's more rude to make somebody wait five weeks for a haircut. Oh, I can't fit you in, sorry, you can come back next month. I feel like that's more rude 
than saying, yeah, I can get you this weekend, but it's 80 bucks or it's whatever it is. Not only is it rude to make somebody wait that long for a haircut, it, it's crippling. Like mentally, you feel so stuck and helpless. You are a slave to your schedule. It's so much nicer to be able to go, yeah, dude, I can get you in. And the way that you get that freedom is by raising your prices. So that's when you raise your prices. Anytime you feel like you're too booked, if it's stressing you out, if you can't take a vacation because you just can't get time away from the chair, if you've got people waiting months to get in, if you've got people trying to get squeezed in every single day, you are too busy and your prices have to go up. It's as simple as that. If you're too busy, you are too cheap. And it's not about your personal value of what you think you're worth. It is a literal, like, basic economics math problem that has nothing to do with how you feel about yourself. It has everything to do with the reality of the situation. If you charged half of what you're charging now, you would in theory be twice as busy, right? Or probably even more. If you charge twice as much as you're charging now, you'll be half as busy. And so you regulate how busy you are by how expensive you are. And it has nothing to do with what you think of yourself or what you think of your clients. It might have a little bit to do thinking about your future, as we're talking about, to allow yourself to be your boss and give yourself this raise because you don't want to be the 40-year-old barber making 25 grand a year. And finally, how do you raise your prices? So there's a lot of different ways to do this. I've seen a million different theories. I'll just tell you about what I've done and what's worked for me. So my favorite way to do it is to just have a straightforward conversation with every client. Typically about a month before the official price raise, I'll start just mentioning it in conversation with the clients. What I've tried before is using a sign, like I'll print out a little sign and put it on my station, but I don't like doing that ultimately because I feel like it's a very passive aggressive way to tiptoe around a hard conversation. And I feel like my clients appreciate it if I'm just more direct with them and I'm just honest and I say, hey, prices are gonna have to go up again. And so I'll spend a month having this hard conversation with every client and it gets easier after you tell the first few clients and then if anybody comes in after that month and they weren't aware of the price raise, what I'll usually do is like, oh, yeah, oh, you didn't hear about it? Okay, so this time I'll give you the old rate, but next time, next time it's going to go up. So that's how I found works really well to do this. And I also learned that if you grandfather clients, if you say, okay, everyone else is going up, but you, you, and you, you're going to stay cheap, eventually that doesn't work out. Um, and, I, and I'm not trying to speak poorly of the character of any of my previous clients, but when I've done that, you start to find that the ones who get the deal like, it's like that if you give a mouse a cookie, they'll ask for a glass of milk and, you know, uh, it, you start to low-key resent those clients. You, it's, you start to do the math and realize how much it's costing that future of yours to be having some of your clients cheaper. It's so much easier, less complicated. Just pull off the Band-Aid and say, my prices are higher now. I no longer do haircuts for this much. I, now they're this much. And you will lose some clients, but that's kind of why you do it, because you're too booked and you need less clients. In all my years of doing this and raising prices when it was appropriate to do so, and now when I say too busy, like you gotta factor out the holiday rush because everyone needs a haircut at the holidays. If you're so slammed and it's December, that's why you're slammed. It's not time to raise your prices. If you're super slammed because it's back to school, it's like, it's back to school, it's not time to raise your prices. But when you're super slammed and it's like April, okay, maybe it's time to think about raising your prices. Anyway, so I've rarely had clients who have just straight up had a problem with this. In the event that a client does have a problem with it, if they just say, man, I can't afford that, the first thing I usually tell them is something along the lines of like, look, dude, um, I, I get it. Like, I'm not doing this to be a jerk. I, I have to raise my prices because I'm too busy. I explain all that to them. And, uh, you know, after this, it'll be easier for you to get an appointment. But if you want to not tip me, I won't be offended. And so it's funny, I, I offer that just to let them know like, hey, look, the new price is basically gonna be what you've been paying already, but you had a tip in there. But if you wanna just keep paying that and not tip me, like I won't be offended, I totally get it. And I've never had somebody actually not tip after that. They go, oh yeah, okay, it's cool, I get it. And then when they come in, they still tip on top of the new haircut price. And so that's usually what I started off with, but then I'll tell them this. Also, if the service I provide isn't gonna work for you after this price raise, I highly recommend this person who works next to me. They cut hair a lot like I do. We've worked next to each other for years. We have similar styles. You know him because you've said what's up to him every time you come in for your haircut. If I ever see you in his chair, it will not be weird. I will give you a hug. I will give you a handshake. We'll have a beer after your haircut. And, and it's the truth. Like, you're, you let them know, here's somebody who's cheaper who can make you happy if you can't come to me anymore. And you, like, hand it off to them. It's not a middle finger to your clients to say, I'm more expensive now, you're on your own, good luck. I mean, that, that's, that's a middle finger, but when you say, hey, I'm more expensive now, sorry, but here's the next best thing. 
Now everybody wins. Or even, let's take it one step further, because I've done this over the years too. I've had people work for me, under me, shadow me, assist me, whatever, and kind of learn my ways, and we'll work on haircuts together after hours. And when you get that person, like Angela worked for me for a number of years, and well, she worked for me for a year, and then she got a chair next to mine. And what I did when I raised my prices and left that salon is I told all my clients who weren't coming to the new salon at the higher rate, I said, hey, go to Angela. And they, they already knew her because she, she was with me while I was doing haircuts for the last year. So they already knew her. They already were comfortable with her. They knew that she learned how to cut hair from me and so therefore should, in theory, have a similar style to me. And so I think a lot of us who are afraid to raise our prices, we don't want to do it because we're like, oh, I don't want to just like, like take what I'm offering away from my client and leave them screwed alone, that middle finger. And so you wanna stay cheap so you can make more people more happy with their hair. But picture this other scenario. You train somebody under you to be good, like you're good, and then you feed them clients as you grow. The clients who can't afford your new prices, they go to this person. Now those clients are still happy because they got the next best thing. They got somebody trained under you. You just helped this person out. You taught them to cut hair and you started feeding them clients. That's, that's nicer to everybody all around. You get to grow. You get that future we talked about. You, you help somebody else grow. You, you help your clients still have somebody that they can trust to cut their hair. In that scenario, everybody wins. If you just want to say, no, I'm never going to raise my prices because I don't want to do that to my clients, you are middle fingering, you are screwing your future self out of all the raises that you deserve. You are being that boss saying, okay, you deserve a raise, but I'm not going to give it to you. You're not teaching somebody who's going to then have a career because of you. You're not taking clients and cycling them through you and to somebody else who can make them happy. You're, you're only limited to how many clients you can have. But if you grow, you get new clients in, the old clients go to somebody else who can make them happy. And, and you become part of this like growing ecosystem where everybody wins and everybody's happy. So if you feel like you're gonna be a dick by raising your prices, train somebody to cut hair like you and, and feed them your old clients, then everybody wins. So this is clearly a bit of a touchy conversation here. And you can see I got heated a little bit along the way. I appreciate you watching it. If you leave any thoughts or disagreements or anything in the comment, give me a thumbs down, whatever. Um, and if you like this and you want more of this, like and subscribe and let me know that you want more um, financial talk about barbers and hairstylists.